Hello again, this is Abbott Time for Clocks. Welcome, amateur clock repair and history. This episode is about a clock that you will see on auction sites that shows up on, well, you'll see it on occasion. And it's called many different things with many different descriptions. The name on the dial is A.L. Swift Chicago. And the paper's wrinkled, so it's very hard to see there. But when I eventually get to going over this clock, I'll straighten that out. So some people refer to it as Swift Clock Company, cast iron stove clock made by Swift Clock Company in Chicago. There was no Swift Clock Company. A lot of times you will see a name on a clock on the dial, and this is popular, 1895, who knows when they stopped the practice, but retailers would often have their names imprinted on the dial. Now, this clock is actually made by West Clocks, or at the time it was the Western Clock Manufacturing Company. And if you bought lots of t clocks, if you bought a lot of 24 or more, they would, they said they would imprint your name on the dial. That old uh, French clock that I have on the dial, it says Kennard and Bigelow, Boston. There was no clockmaker Kennard or Bigelow in Boston. They were retailers of high-end clocks from France and other items, but they had the clocks made and shipped over to the United States with their name imprinted on the dial. So many times advertisers or resellers, in this case Albert Swift, seller of novelty clocks, he had he he had his name imprinted on there, and the Western Clock Company. They were also in Illinois, in Peru, Illinois, and Swift was in Chicago, and Deemer was supposed to be in Chicago. So you have these three elements in Illinois coming together to make this clock. Now I did I did find Al Swift in the business directory of Chicago for the year 1900 and the year 1910. And he was listed as president of A.L. Swift Novelties. He ran a novelty company. Novelty companies, they would commission with manufacturers to make items for them, which they would sell or commit. They, they would, many times they would join with publishers, newspapers, books, and, they, and for membership drives and so forth, they would give items as gifts or awards to promote circulation and sales and it wasn't just clocks it was almost anything a novelty that could be a new form of can opener it could be a clothing accessory something a man would put on his hat to uh, you know it could be anything a novelty is basically something something new something unusual that's just been made that people hadn't seen before that fulfills a certain purpose. There was toys that were novelty toys, like a musical coffee grinder. It could be anything. So, there's no Swift clock company. And when it comes to Deemer, I couldn't find any Deemer in the Chicago directory. 1900, there was no business that I could find called Deemer. They were not listed under iron, under foundry, under, under manufacturing, nothing. In fact, I looked at the individuals and there was no one named Deemer that actually lived in Chicago in the year 1900. In 1910, there were four people listed in the, in the individual directory for the, with the name Deemer. One was a housewife, one was a porter, one was a steam fitter, and one sold cement coated nails. That was it. So I don't know what happened to this Deemer company but I couldn't find any name and or business called Deemer associated with wood stoves and this patent they applied for couldn't find any evidence of that I did a patent search so I think these clocks were only made for a certain amount of time between 1903 and 1909 somewhere in there that's my my best guess. Uh, one one place thought that this was a salesman sample. First off, 
it can't granted salesman samples like for a sewing machine or whatever they would have a small version of the sewing machine that they could carry around with them to show people to uh, generate sales I mean you can't just go up and down the street with cast iron stoves and <laughs> things like that so this could not be a salesman sample in my opinion because it it doesn't even look like a stove again it could have been something to promote the sales of wood stoves because it was made in the same material as the cast cast iron stove because it is cast iron it is heavy it is substantial just to promote the name Deemer it's possible an, an auction site another site said that these were cast iron stove clocks because they were meant to be put on top of your cast iron wood stove and because it's so thick it would protect the clock and it has an alarm function so you can that's poppycock that is I would I would say that is an urban myth this is this is right at the base the bottom of that clock because it sits in there like this the heat coming from a wood stove into this clock would dry up the oil within maybe one day and then the clock would stop that would be the end of that a, a source that generates high heat you don't want to put clocks around it it's just bad so I don't think that's a valid a valid uh, idea so what was it did they go on did, did you put them up on the shelf of your wood-burning kitchen stove well there's certainly nowhere to put it on a pot belly stove so I think it was just a cute little novelty that A.L. Swift was marketing in partnership with West Clocks and or Western Clock Company and the, whoever Deemer was to put this case together and Swift he just had his name on the dial maybe he put everything together I don't know but all the descriptions of this clock seem to be filled with some type of falsehood and speculation which along with a lot of these antique things who really knows it's mainly guesswork anyway so I have never found AL Swift Chicago on any other item that doesn't mean there aren't any other items out there it's just I haven't seen any in my online research if he if he promoted other novelties which I'm sure he must have he just didn't have this this was he a one-trick pony he, he only did these clocks I don't know but it is still running but this one's missing some knobs it's missing a few knobs on the back and I think somebody painted it blue the other ones I've seen they had a kind of a gold plated or shined up brass bell and this um, and the back being blue like that I think it was I never I haven't seen any other pictures of these of that color I think it uh, somebody painted that and as far as this goes the paint on this kind of sloppy I don't think that's original paint maybe you can make a judgment on that I don't know you can look at the edge or the back see the inside is more the color of what I think the clock actually was on the outside I think it was a uh, black enameled paint like they do on typical black enameled clock iron clocks and that's mostly what I see in the in the uh, in the pictures of other uh, of these clocks that I, I see online so before I actually tackle this clock as a project maybe you can put in the comments if you think that's the original paint 
If you think it is the original paint, I might keep it. It just looks kind of... It just looks really thick. Like... It just doesn't seem right. But I don't know everything. I don't know everything about... Um, antique finishes and paint. This could have been a paint from the 50s. Who knows? So if most of the people that leave a comment, if they don't think it's the original paint, I think I might try to remove it and just have a nice uh, enameled black surface on the clock. But it is running. And typically these were one day clocks. And West clocks, they made, they made these clocks for many manufacturers to put in their cases. So a lot of the cases, like my friend Scott, who has his channel, Old Curiosity Shop, he is a reseller of items that he finds anywhere from uh, 1920s all the way to the 60s. But he, he has knowledge of them and he talks about them. And he showed me this clock that was, it was a little similar to this. The dial was the same, looked the same. But his had a foot in the back, so it was actually an easel easel style clock. And I tried to research, and I couldn't find anything about it. But he thought his dial looked like this one, but it didn't say Al Swift. So it's possible it could be West West clocks, or Western clock manufacturing clock. But who knows? Uh, WCMC. I think those are the initials that Western Clock Manufacturing Company used on the back of their clocks so that once this is cleaned off, if you, you should see a w, uh, WCMC. That would be referring to the Western Clock Company. So sometimes with all this paint on here, it's hard to see anything. <clears throat> so anyhow, investigating his clock and trying to see what it was and I and I was unsuccessful led me to this one because he thought his dial looked similar to this and so then I started looking up AL Swift to see what's going on because Scott asked me he said was there a Swift clock company in Chicago because some people say there was but there was not so <sighs> So I'll put it back together, but this is definitely a project for another time. And I just wanted to go into some of the myths and gobbledygook that people write about antique things. They just copy it from here and there and they don't substantiate anything. I'll say one more thing about, uh, or a couple more things, about West Clocks. I'm, I'm just calling it West Clocks, even though it was Western Clock Manufacturing Corp uh, Company that they made these alarm clocks this one the bells on the bottom for this particular one but generally the bell was on the top and it had legs and and you know they would they would sit like this and they were one generally one day clocks that you would have to wind every day uh they were very popular and west clocks it said that they actually made half a million of these every year and in 1913 they actually made 900,000 clocks that they shipped out the door. I mean, it was a huge business. So if you wanted a special order for clocks, they were more than happy to make a clock and put your name on the dial and send you off a nice big order. And a lot of times that's what that's what uh, people did. Like Mr. Swift, he took, <laughs> put my name on there. There we go. Oh, here's another idea. With the name A.L. Swift on the front, Maybe A.L. Swift, Albert Swift, maybe he was promoting himself. Maybe these clocks were simply to promote his novelty business. That just occurred to me. That's that's entirely possible. That the, the iron case, deemer connection, maybe it had nothing to do with stove clocks. Maybe it was just a novel, interesting, solid looking clock that he wanted to get to sell with his name on there. To get notoriety for himself and his novelty business. 
now that I come to think of it, I think maybe that's what he did. But who knows? All right, well, that's it. Just a little episode on an, on a unique little clock, and uh, I never know what, it's, <laughs> what my videos are going to be about day to day. There's so many avenues in clock repair that the possibilities are, they just, they're new every day. Anyhow, I'm, I'm excited to find out a little more about a clock that I knew nothing about. And if you know something that I don't about these clocks, I would be glad to read your comment. All right. Well, that's it for this episode. I thank you for joining me. Welcome to the new subscribers. And if you have any suggestions, comments, feel free to put them in. I try to reply to each one because I appreciate all the viewers. I subscribe to channels. Some of them have thousands and thousands of viewers. And the person that owns the channel will never even um, acknowledge your comment. I hope. I actually hope my channel never gets to that point. Seriously, most people don't care about clocks. And some people, they find my channel. Uh, subscriber count goes up and then the next day it goes down. Why? Because most people really don't care about clocks that much. <laughs> or it could be other factors. Production values, whatever. That's okay. The people that stay, that's fine. You're welcome. It's like a family. All right. Well, take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.